What up, it's Shankster94, and welcome to Resident Evil Revelations Weapons Review. For your subscribers, you notice the quality is better than my previous videos that I film on the 3DS. That's because I'm using a different recording method. I'm using a webcam instead of my flip camera. The advantage to that is, you can see more clearly and it's not blurry, but the disadvantage is, as you can see, it shoots at a lower frame rate, so the video is kind of skippy and not smooth, but I think that's better than blurriness if you ask me. So yeah, well anyway, this will be just like Resident Evil 5 weapons review. The weapons don't have any weapon descriptions, so yeah. Let's get started. So I'll start with the usual, the knife. In raid mode, Parker uses an axe instead of a knife. Keith uses two blades instead of a knife. Alright, now let's test it on an ooze enemy. I didn't keep count of how many shots that took, so when I review this clip, I'll just post it as a title. Alright? That's it for the knife. Now for the next weapon, the hand grenade. These are the only weapons that have descriptions. A destructive hand-thrown explosive works well on clusters of enemies. All right, now let's test that on an enemy. I am playing this on normal mode, so this is as most default as we can get. So apparently, one grenade for a standard ooze. I recommend grenades for crowds, and if you're close to death, it's a good option to kill the enemy that's about to kill you. All right. Now for the next weapon, the shot grenades. A hand grenade that releases a high voltage electric shock. Alright, now let's test that on an enemy. Oh, also, if you throw those too close to yourself, you can get shocked as well, so be careful. Alright, so two shot grenades for the ooze. Now, I recommend the shot grenade also for crowds, but they are actually really useful when battling against the Scar Miglions. The thing with the shield that likes to block your shots until they get close to you, you have to either aim for their legs or their head, and if you shoot them in the head a lot, their body, body will split and have the electric thing. You know what I'm talking about. Alright. So yeah, I recommend it against the Skarmiglion. So, alright, that's it for the shot grenade. Alright, now, f oh shit. Alright, now for the next weapon, the decoy. A timer-based explosive that attracts creatures by using high frequencies. So I can't really just test it out. I have to test it on an enemy straight away. So here we go So two decoys to finish the standard dues now the decoys are mainly used as a defense thing and a getaway thing, so yeah, you really shouldn't use more than one at a time, I mean, they're good for killing a lot of crowds because they all follow it, then again, not all enemies do follow this thing sometimes, but um, it is a good getaway thing and it could save your life, so alright, that's it for the decoy. Alright, now for the last handheld weapon, the pulse grenade. 
delivers a powerful high frequency pulse causing temporary paralysis. Now what that does is it emits a flash and it's meant to stun enemies not to kill them. So yeah, th this grenade does good when you want to perform a melee move on an enemy. It's also the only grenade you could use underwater. So when uh, those sea creepers are trying to grab your legs, it's good to use them if you're like almost out of breath and you need to get away from them and get to the top. So yeah. Alright, now to show you the results of what the pulse grenade does. So yeah, it stuns them, and you can go for a melee attack after they're stunned. So, there's the stun grenade. And now to move on to the next weapon class. Okay, and now we're moving into the firearms. This is going to be different from Resident Evil 5. I am going to review the small firearms in first person view, and the large firearms in third person view. So you can get more of the gun. I know, I'm like that. I, I just like to do that for you guys. Um, also... Like I've been doing, I'm going to review the weapon in a female's perspective and then in a male's perspective because they hold the gun differently. But I'm going to show the male's perspective in raid mode. And the thing with that is in raid mode, all the weapons are a higher level. So some of the stats are different. So it might fire faster. Just ignore that. I'm just showing it in the male's perspective. That's all I'm doing. I'm not reviewing the stats of that. Alright, not, not to really get onto it. The first weapon class, as usual, the handguns. And the first handgun, the Beretta M92F. Alright, now to test the M92F on an enemy. So, seven shots for a standard ooze. Alright, that's it for the M92F. Now for the next handgun, the PC-356. Reloads much faster than the M92F. The only thing really besides that, that it has over the M92F is it could hold more spaces for upgrades. All right, now let's test it on an enemy. All right, the PC-356 also took seven shots. And when you look at the stats, the firepower isn't much higher. It's actually lower than the M92F. But yeah, nevertheless, almost the same firepower unless you put upgrades on it. All right, that's it for the PC-356. Now for the next handgun, the Glock 18. Shoots much faster than the standard handgun, which is obvious, it's a Glock 18. What do you expect? <laughs> All right, now to test it on an enemy. Alright, the G18 also took 7 shots. Most of the handguns don't have a firepower dis difference, except for the next, next and last one, which I'm about to show you. And now for the final handgun, the government handgun. Technically, the Colt 1911. I mean, just look at it. And it is arguably the most powerful handgun in the game, because you could tell by the firepower. As a trade for its mass firepower, the firing rate is quite low and annoying sometimes. <laughs> Alright, now to test it on a news.
All right, so only five shots with the Colt 1911, a.k.a. government handgun. So yes, it is the most powerful handgun in the game, but it's also the slowest. So you got you got four choices. My personal favorite, the PC-356, because you can put the most upgrades on it, and you can turn it into a powerful gun, powerful fast-firing gun anyway. So yeah, all right, that's it for the handguns.